Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back, everyone, to the Ilm Feed podcast. I'm your host, Shabir. Hope you're keeping well, keeping safe. We are back with yet another episode of the podcast. Really, really excited uh, for, for this one, no doubt, especially with Ramadan around the corner. A lot of us are thinking or gearing up into that charity mode. And many of you over the last few years have probably heard of Launch Good, an amazing platform, uh, you know, the world's largest faith-inspired crowdfunding platform, something which I've been using for a long time, huge fan of. And inshallah, today we're going to have a conversation with the founder and CEO, Brother Chris Abdurrahman Blavelt. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing, Shabir? Good, alhamdulillah. How are you doing? You okay? Oh, excellent. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you uh, for joining us. Where, where are you joining us from, by the way? I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Right. Interesting. Detroit. Okay. Okay. And uh, well, like, what time is it there right now? Uh, it's about nine in the morning. <sighs> okay. So we've got a good five or so hour difference. Five hours. Yep. Yeah. Five, five hours. hour difference. Nice. Nice. Okay. Mashallah. So welcome to, uh, welcome to the UK, even though you're not physically here. <laughs> oh. And, uh, you know, of course, usually we would invite you to the, to the studio. Uh, but of course, we're going to make do with our remote uh, podcast studio, inshallah, uh, for today. I'll, I'll take a rain check on the uh, tea and biscuits for, for next, uh, <laughs> maybe for summer next or something. I, don't you guys have like a three-week span of nice weather every year? Yeah, uh, three weeks if we're, if we're lucky, definitely. Yeah. If, it's, if it's a good year, then alhamdulillah, three weeks is excellent for us. <laughs> so no, thank you for joining us. Uh, really excited, like I said, uh, for this one. Launch good. Um, it's been a busy year for you guys, no doubt. Um, I think last oh, I yeah. checked, you guys, um, alhamdulillah, surpassed, what, the $100 million mark? Am I right in saying that? Yeah. So actually, about almost exactly a year ago, we surpassed $100 million. Um, So, you know, it's about seven years, six and a half years of work. It got us to $100 million. Mm-hmm. And then just in the last year, we've almost doubled that. Now we're around $183 million. No um, way, mashallah. So it's... It's pretty cool. It's pretty uh, unbelievable for us. And I'm very grateful. But, you know, almost every year, that total amount of funds raised nearly doubles every single year. MashaAllah. That's amazing. And, and of course, when we say crowdfunding, um, we're not just talking about, you know, charitable organizations and NGOs, etc. Um, we're also talking what, like personal kind of Kickstarter campaigns as well, right? Yeah, you know, we're a whole blend. So typically within crowdfunding, you have your platforms that focus on a niche, let's say, um, uh, uh, not market. Sure, let's call it a market, like a niche market. So they, like Kickstarter is very famous for its pre-sales. You know, someone is releasing a new game and they might do it on Kickstarter. Um, GoFundMe is is very famous for its individual fundraisers. So someone's in an accident and, and, you know, friends are raising money to help them. And just giving, for example, it's very famous famous for its organizational fundraisers. Um, so, you know, Islamic Relief is doing a charity run and, you know, they might use Just Giving. Launch Good operates across all those markets, but our niche is the community. So we help Muslims do all tor- sorts of fundraising. Um, so as an example, like the Kickstarter style campaign, we just had a very, very like a super successful campaign for the Baraka Journal by Productive Muslim. Um, and so they're doing a pre-sale of the Baraka Journal. And then when it comes to individual campaigns, you know, for example, we had uh, a, our largest individual ca- campaign ever actually was an individual campaign of sorts is for the victims of the New Zealand shooting. Um, and that raised several million dollars, for example. Um, and then when it comes to organizational fundraising, we, that's actually it, our most common fundraisers is that, you know, 70 percent of the people that are actually doing fundraising and launch could are charities like Islamic Relief. Um, and uh, as example of that, actually, we just I just found it this morning pretty cool. Um, There's a a community of converts or new Muslims um, outside of Pittsburgh uh, that had a masjid that was about to close and they needed to raise like $83,000 in a week. And I was like, and I have to be honest, it's not a wealthy community. Hmm. So I know them and I'm like, oh, I was like, this is heartbreaking. Like, so of course we offered to help, but I, I, internally I'm like, I don't think you guys can get there. And I just got, um, uh, I got it. It was shared with me like yesterday or the day before. And I was like, okay, I'll donate to it when I get to it. As, as we all do, we procrastinate. 
And I just got a message there, like they just hit their goal. They raised $83,000 in like 15 hours. So no way. Um, yeah, that's pretty cool. But yeah, we work across the spectrum of pre-sale, individual, organizational, but the focus is like the Muslim community. And that's what we yeah. really are driven to, to, to support and empower inshallah. Inshallah, yeah, no, that's awesome. And you know what? I've actually been using Launch Good for, for many, many years now, like genuinely. Um, I tell you like, uh, you know, in terms of not just supporting campaigns, but also running a few of my own. I'll tell you what the first one's quite, you know, I was just thinking about it just, just before we started today. This was a good five, six years ago, right? Wow. Um, I think it was like in the beginning stages of Launch Good. It must um, have been. And, and I sta I, I, we started this campaign called the Haramain Heroes campaign. Oh, yeah. Um, it, was, uh, it was like a first of its kind. Where I was basically going out for Umrah that year. And I decided, you know what? Like uh, every time I go for Umrah, I see these, mashallah, these cleaners and caretakers. Um, you'll probably see them in their blue kind of kits, right? Um, in, 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 within the Haram in Mecca and Medina. But, you know, these guys need support. They, they've, they've left their families and from whichever country they've come from. And they need support and they need appreciation for what they do. And I remember putting together... This was the first time ever using Launch Good, uh, and it was just amazing, like you know, putting it all together. Um, and and then yeah, we raised like I can't remember, but we raised a few thousand, I reckon. Went out there and literally distributed it in Mecca and Medina, in the holy cities. Um, and honestly, like I, I remember recording some bits as well, just for like personal. Um, in fact, I uploaded a clip on YouTube of that, and it got like half a million views, and and so people saw lot. that, and they said, you know what? Next time I go for Umrah or Hajj, I'm going to do the same. Do. And you know, it was there's, there's, so there's so many good lessons in that about like exactly what our, our vision with Launch Good is. Although I have a just a very technical question. Who was your coach? Did you have a coach? It was a sister. I think if I'm not mistaken, her name was like Farzana or something. Yeah, Farzana Gardi probably. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, I think so. Yeah, uh, who... Yeah. who uh, She's she was she moved on, but she actually um, is the wife of uh, Riyad Minty, who started AJ Plus and now TRT World. And oh, like, wow. they're sure. great people, and they're from South Africa. And they're, you know, so this is what so this is what I get really excited about is we are a global Muslim community, and from day one, it's really important for me that Launch could be a global Muslim platform, which is actually. It sounds easy, like it starts getting really complicated because of compliance and financial regulations, mm -hmm. et cetera. But like, look what you did. So you used, you're a British, uh, what, what, if you don't mind, are you like British Pakistani or Bengali? Bangladeshi. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're, you're British Bangladeshi using an American platform by, uh, you know, started by a white convert, a Syrian American and, a, and an Egyptian American. And you're raising wow. money for somebody in, or people in the Haram who most likely are themselves from maybe Pakistan or India or other places. Yeah. And your donors probably came from dozens of countries yeah. all around the world. And like, how, how incredible is that? Like, and that's, that's actually amazing. our community. You know, I, I feel very grateful to have a certain perspective because I entered into Islam. Like I wasn't necessarily born into it. Um, and, and I, you know, growing up, I was, um, uh, growing up in a very like let's say white suburban bubble like very you know I mean I didn't know Muslims for example um, and uh, you know come from a Christian background but not really faithful or practicing and then you become Muslim and you're like subhanallah it's, like, it's such a diverse community yeah. and the the brotherhood the sisterhood is real right mm -hmm. I mean Christian I, I, I don't like to talk bad about anybody but just as in per example like if we take a Christian community, we might say, sure, like Christians are brothers in faith. And, but it really, if you, you brought a Christian from America with a Christian to Africa, like, ah, they're, they're not really going to like bond. But subhanAllah, you bring Muslims from anywhere in the world together. Mm -hmm. And there's this like-heartedness between them. It's mm -hmm. really amazing. Um, yes. And we yeah, actually, in my own influence, like if, if you wonder how I became Muslim, in part, it was from Malcolm X and his autobiography and talking about his experience with the Hajj and Allah Yerhamu, he just you know, two days ago was a memorial of his assassination. Yeah. Um, but just like, you know, that, that transformative experience of the Hajj and sipping water from the same cup as white skin, blue eyed, blonde haired Muslims, you know, and realizing that, no, we're all Benny Adam, you know, we're all the children of Adam. Um, and uh, we have a name for that community. I don't know if you guys use this 
term, but the gummies term. And maybe Zane has introduced you to gummies. No, I haven't actually. What? No, never? No, you never heard yeah. of gummies? No. Oh, my goodness. So this is, we're all about gummies. Like people say like, oh, you know, who do we serve? We serve gummies. And what do we mean? We don't mean the Haribo, you know, halal <laughs> Turkish gummies. No, yeah. it stands for global urban Muslims at a very basic level, just like we can think about global urban Muslims, English, or sorry, educated English speaking. So global urban Muslims who are educated in English speaking, G-U-M-E-E-S. But more important, the acronym, like it's very easy to recognize. For example, you're, Bengali, British, I'm white American, and we can instantly bond hmm. because we're, we're both Muslim. We have those, you know, that lightheartedness, the shared values. Um, we're both educated enough. We're speaking the same language. And that's who we serve as Launch Good. I, I argue that's also who MFeed serves, for example. How big do you think this gummies market is? Or I, I'll actually, just in the UK, how big is the gummies market in the UK? What would you reckon? Gummies market in the UK, I don't know, a couple of million. Maybe. Exactly. Actually, that's exactly what I tell people is two million. Yeah. In the US, it's three million. In Canada, it's like one million. So, you know, in the three kind of biggest English speaking countries in the world, it's it's a very small number. We're talking about six million. Mm -hmm. But as you know, I'm sure with MFeed, your you listeners are listeners are not only in the UK, US, and Canada, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, we've, got, we've got we've got our Ilmfeed family, mashallah, spanning all the way through Turkey, through Europe, all the way into Malaysia, Far East, uh, Indonesia, exactly. inshallah. So like if you so every country in the world, I bet actually there's probably Ilmfeed listener or reader in every country in the world. Hmm. So you have to start adding up all those little bits, like half a million in Australia, fifty thousand in New Zealand. But then you take a country like Malaysia. Okay, probably the majority of people in Malaysia you know, they can't really access what you're, you're producing because of the English. Mm. Uh, so take away, you know, the 30, 40 million Muslims, um, you know, maybe only 10 million are gummies, but that's a significant population. Same with yeah. Turkey, same with Pakistan, right? You're going to have five, 10, 15 million. If you start adding up all of these numbers uh, and we did it one time um, and uh, recently revised it, it's by our estimate about 330 million people. Wow. So, that's larger than the United States. It'd actually be the third largest country in the world. So it'd be like China, India, and then gummies, like this global <laughs> Muslim community. Um, it, it, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And I think we're just starting to realize how connected we are um, mm -hmm. in a large part because of the internet, you know, I mean, the yeah. internet really opens up doors and opportunities for this community to come together because we know the politics, the geopolitics and the borders and all that, like it does keep us apart, unfortunately, right? Yeah. Um, and we look back and we're like, man, oh, we missed the caliph, days of the caliph or centrified, centralized Muslim power. And it's like, yeah, that's probably not coming back anytime soon. Um, but we can still be a unified Muslim community. Uh, and the internet really helps facilitate that. Um, and it's it's exciting times. Yeah, definitely. That's 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 what I was gonna say. Really, like when it comes down to a project um, as now, mashallah, huge as launch good. Of course, you know we're, we're so proud of the fact that you know we're almost hitting two hundred million dollars worldwide, etc. But I think what's probably more amazing than that is if you just take everything apart and think about how many people are actually behind the two hundred million. Um, yeah. It's probably way more than like that. I'm not. You're a very smart like guy. That. <laughs> really smart guy. Because honestly, like the, the, the money is like easy for people to digest, right? Or to, to conceptualize like, oh, 200 million, like that's a real number. And inshallah, probably in the next three years, we'll cross a billion dollars. And that'll be like a big number. It's significant. It's meaningful. That's really good. But we hit a very quiet, but to me, a critical milestone in December, which is 1 million users. And it's that number, which is really like, it speaks to the power of the platform and the, the opportunities of, of um, you know, the community in general. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had like, you know, basically a, a, a leadership retreat and we had to make a decision about which direction we were going with launch good. Did we want to go further down this path of crowdfunding? And now we're going to just kind of open it up and compete head on with just giving and GoFundMe. And it's not, not as a Muslim, maybe it's ethical. And that would actually be fine. It'd probably be a really good business decision. Uh, mm -hmm. 
it'd be easy to, for example, get acquired and sell the company and, you know, maybe retire in Zanzibar or something. But we decided to go a different path, um, which for us is the more meaningful path and where we have our, it just happens to be where we have our passion, which is let's go further down this gummy path. Like we, we don't want to really like do crowdfunding for anybody. Um, we like serving the Muslim community, but how else can we serve that Muslim community? And we've got a great starting point, you know, a million users. Um, and uh, it gets us thinking like, you know, what else can we do to, to really help uplift our community? Um, yeah. we, we, have, we have amazing values. We, we have these incredible aspirational values from Islam, from the history of Islam, um, uh, incredible legacy of innovators and uh, scientists and, you know, just change makers from, you know, all the way back to, you know, we talked about Khawarizmi with algebra, but it's even Muhammad Ali was like, you know, largely uh, identified as the greatest athlete of the 20th century, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we have all the kind of the ingredients there. And of course we have 1.8, 9 billion Muslims in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I really, I'm very like optimistic about the future of the Muslim community. I think all the elements are there, but we need people who are willing to kind of take a, a risk on it and invest their lives into uh, uh, really making it happen. Uh, what, yeah. what is own feed? I pray it's launched good. And, you know, there's like, as you guys know, there's little like pockets here and there of mm -hmm. stuff happening, but it, it, it's really, uh, I, I do believe the, the planting of seeds and, and we'll be harvesting um, the crops, you know, inshallah and the, the, by the next generation. Yeah, absolutely, inshallah. I'm really interested, really, to, to, I mean, you've kind of touched on small parts, you've, you've kind of touched on like your own personal kind of journey as well, in terms of uh, where you've kind of come from. But I want to like, you know, put those pieces of the puzzle together and just talk about like the journey of launch good itself, which alhamdulillah, like we said, in the last few years has really picked up. Um, but like, you know, y y you're a Muslim, you you've been inspired by um, the story of Malcolm X. But why, why this for, you know, why launch good? Mm -hmm. Why, why, why charity for, um, and, you know, I, I'm pretty sure like your team has, has grown, like, you know, Mashallah, I've got some really good brothers here in the UK who are part of the, the launch good team, people like Zayn and, and Adid, et cetera. Right. Um, I know them very well. And, you know, it's just amazing to see like all across the world, you've got now this team that have, that have come together. Um, so what was the story? What, what's the why behind it and how did it happen? So let, let's go. Uh, I'm going to take this all the way to the very beginning, okay. uh, which is starts in Malaysia. Uh, one of those fun facts about me, I always use this whenever you have that game, like two truths and a lie. Um, but I was actually born in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. So oh, wow. 1984, my parents, my dad got, uh, uh, he was working for Merck Express in New York City. He got a promotion that required him to move to Malaysia. And I happened to be born there. A couple of years later, we moved to Korea. A couple of years later, we moved back to America. Um, and, uh, you know, I, there, there's a funny story. And this is like, I mean, I guess it is related to the launch good journey. I'll just say it. My, my mom tells a story and, you know, she's not Muslim, but Allah guide her and she's a great person. Uh, she loves to tell a story how, you know, something like the event was going off when I was born. I, who knows, right? But I did visit the hospital I was born at um, uh, a number of years ago while I was in college. And I was like, you know, my mom has this story about that then. Um, I wonder what mustard that comes from. And there's a, like, so I went looking at my friend and then we found the mustard and it was, uh, subhanAllah, the name of the mustard, I believe is Masjid Abdurrahman. Uh, no, and my <laughs> Muslim nickname is Abdurrahman. You know, so wow. part of me wondering, like, are there just a bunch of, you know, kind of converts out there <laughs> like, and you know, who knows uh but i think one thing to take away from that is subhanallah there's been a lot of barakah a lot of blessing in my journey i'm i'm i don't really feel uh uh deserving of it and and i pray that i'm grateful for it though um but you know largely even though i had so i had that like maybe some initial exposure to muslims um in my, you know, pre, pre memory, like, I don't have any memories of that time, but, you know, in, in maybe a formative time in my life. Um, and, uh, but largely I was just growing up in New Jersey and Massachusetts. We call that like the Northeast of, uh, of America. Um, 
not really attached to my Christian background. Um, you know, certainly we go to church, for example, on Christmas and maybe a Sunday here or there, uh, yeah. say grace on Sunday dinner. But other than that, like faith wasn't real, I would say. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a term for it. It's called Christers. Have you ever heard that before? No, I haven't. Never heard Christers. of that? Christer? Christer. A Chris, Christmas Easter Christian. Uh, so you only go to church like for Christmas nice. and Easter. <laughs> You know, and, and we kind of have our own version in the Muslim community, like the 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 ones that only go to the church, like the masjid for the Eid, right? <laughs> so they might go to twice a year, same same in the Christian community of the priesters. Yeah. But we were, you know, kind of like priesters. My older sister, um, uh, I looked up to her a lot. She actually became atheist uh, in middle school, um, middle school, high school. And, and uh, I just followed her into that, to be honest. I'm a very rational person, like, You know, for example, uh, I used to be a math teacher and uh, studied engineering school and stuff. So, you know, growing up, it was like, uh, and I assume it's like this in the UK, but definitely in the US, you feel this, you know, dichotomy of like religion or science, you know, faith or reason. Like those are, you got to choose. Is that how it is in the UK? Pretty much. Yeah. And and, and I think that's, that's probably something which is more so we're seeing now more than ever, I think. Especially in this this generation. The new atheist movement and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and um, you know, it's interesting. I mean, that's a whole other discussion. It's interesting, the new atheists, like, they really target Muslims. Because I think the Muslims don't have the inherent contradiction that a lot of, like, Christianity does in its history. Um, and they're trying to, like, invent this conflict in a sense. Um, but anyway, so I grew up in that environment. In high school, uh, when I was 13, we moved to Massachusetts. And we moved next door to a family called the Dans. Uh, and they had a son, Michael. So Michael Dan or Mike Dan. And he's same age as me. We used to, we actually both tennis stars. Um, I don't play much tennis anymore. But at that time, Mike and I were like one and two on the team. Um, and uh, Mike had a tennis coach who was African-American Muslim from right. Elizabeth, New Jersey. Like his family grew up going, you know, listening to Malcolm X and stuff. And Mike actually like, uh, even though we had a lot of similarities, we weren't friends because he was kind of frankly just a very bad kid like just doing horrible stuff um all the time so i kept my distance from him and uh at one point he got indefinitely grounded i don't know if you were do you use the word grounded in the uk yeah we do yeah yeah, yeah. we do yeah you know i, I never know what the uk wears like you got boot instead of trunk and yeah, I don't uh, know, no, but... no, no 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 grounded grounded i think is definitely a, a universal one but i think with with the culture I, you know, in like South Asian Muslim culture, there's no such thing really as like grounded. No, you, like, you, you don't just get, get grounded. Wolf. Like, yeah, it, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Goes on. The white people, we, we, we just ground our kids, but he got grounded indefinitely. Like, it's like, we don't know when we're going to let you out because you were mm. so bad. And the only thing he could do was hang out with his tennis coach, Art. And Art started basically in, making dawah to him. It was interesting. The way he made dawah was not through Islam. He actually gave him books that were Christian books, but talk were a bit general. And they talked about the value of having God in your life. Mm. And uh, that started to click with Mike, you know, and he realized like he wasn't going to head down a good path. And he started on his own asking questions specifically about Islam. And uh, after maybe a year or so, he, he became Muslim. And when he became Muslim, he changed. Like he, you know, very, very obvious. In some ways, too obvious. Like one day he came to school in the Thobe and you're like, whoa, you're wearing a dress today, Mike? Like, what's wrong? <laughs> um, but uh, it was all very admirable. And we became friends. And I started to appreciate Islam as I learned through him. And I said, yeah, this is, that's actually a very sensible faith. Uh, I wasn't interested in becoming Muslim. Um, then I read the autobiography of Malcolm X, as I explained. And I was uh, at that age, I was uh, 16. So I was also very kind of enraged to discover that racism is still alive and kicking and, you know, poisoning our hearts and and poisoning our country. Um, And I I really did see in Islam a solution for racism, a solution for the sickness in people's hearts in America. Mm. And I was intrigued. I was compelled, but I didn't believe in God. So it was at this weird crossroads, like, oh, I'd love to be Muslim, but I don't really, I, I don't want to fake it. Like, I don't believe in God. You know, how can I, I have to really believe in him. And uh, I read also an autobiography from Malcolm X. When he was in prison, he was advised, take one step towards God. 
and God will take two steps towards you. Uh, and we know there's hadith like that, you know, come to God walking, he'll come to you running, you come to him, the hands, fan comes to your arm length. So uh, I was like, you know, I'm a young rationalist, I'm a young uh, uh, scientist, I can do this. Um, I'm going to just run a little experiment. And my, you know, I have a hypothesis and my hypothesis is God is not real. Um, and I'm going to, you know, quit eating pork and I'm going to quit, you know, going to parties and drinking and stuff um, for six months. And, uh, you know, if at that time, like I find that God, you know, isn't real, then I'm going to just, you know, have a big barbecue party at my house or something. And uh, alhamdulillah, within those six months, I ended up becoming Muslim, um, especially, especially as I studied the Quran and the scientific miracles of the Quran. And I realized that Islam is not a faith where you have to pick between faith and reason, but that reason should strengthen your faith. Mm -hmm. um, so now let's kind of loop this into launch good. I know it's a, a little bit of a long story, but I hope your, your, you know, your listeners enjoy it. Yeah, yeah um, absolutely. I know a lot of converts are weary of telling their story. I certainly uh, get tired of it at times, <laughs> but I, I do remember the, uh, you know, one of the verses in the Quran, فَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ you know, so like for the blessings you Lord proclaim them and I can't think of a, a greater blessing on me than Islam. Um, so, I became Muslim. I'm inspired by Malcolm. I'm inspired by this man that really left a legacy. And, and I'm thinking like from day one, like I need to leave a legacy. And, you know, of course, you start reading stories of Sahaba. And I'm sure you've experienced this yourself. Like many new Muslims have this zeal to them. Yeah. You've seen not that just, Not just new Muslims, but like even just newly practicing yeah, so newly practicing, folk practicing right? Yeah. Exactly. So I was like rocking the kufi, and I was like, Islam's number one. <laughs> like three months after becoming Muslim, 9-11 yeah. happened. Oh. And like Osama bin Laden's on TV. And like, who's this guy? I mean, people are asking me questions. Like, I didn't even, like, people ask me, am I Sunni or Shia? And I'm like, I don't even understand your question. You know, and now you're expecting me to defend Islam against terrorism. Like, I, I was really confused. I remember sitting with Mike in his bedroom and, and crying because I just, I didn't understand like what, what did it mean to be Muslim? Mm. And I was very, so I think that that event did a couple of things to me. One, it drove me to really understand Islam. You know, did I make a mistake? Did I uh, like basically make a majorly wrong decision here? Um, and it, it also sent me, I would say on a journey uh, and, and, you know, to answer that, uh, like, you know, alhamdulillah, I, I, I tr I've traveled a lot of Muslim world. I've been very fortunate to do a very light amount of studying across a number of scholars. And, um, you know, one thing is like, you know, alhamdulillah, I didn't make a mistake. Islam is the, the truth. And, you know, the um, actually Muslims are beautiful. Like, I think Muslims are amazing. Even if you don't like Islam, like Muslims always treat you hospitable and give you tea and so on and so forth. Right. So. Uh, I'd say the second thing that 9-11 did for me is it really made me realize we have to change the understanding of Islam and Muslims across the world. Mm. And so for that, what did I do? I went to school and I studied engineering, which is like such a letdown, right? And I'm like working in California as an engineer at Intel, you know, so the microprocessor, yeah. microchip processor company. And I'm just like, it's a good job, right? I'm in California. It's beautiful. Like I can go skiing. I can go to the beach. Like, but then I'm like, is this really why I became Muslim? Like, I became Muslim just to sit in this cubicle, like and collect a paycheck. And uh, I was fortunate. I was still pretty young. I was 21, I think, at the time, um, 22. And I had a really inspiring boss, and not a Muslim, but uh, just one of those like bigger than life type of people, Jim Kelso. And he brought us all in a conference room one day. He's like. Uh, you got to figure out what you want to do in life and, you know, don't hold back and, you know, chase your dreams. And he's asking everyone what they want to do. Everyone's kind of kissing up to him, right? Because he's a boss. Like, oh, I love supply chain or this or that, which is all BS, but like, that's fine. <laughs> and he looks at me and I say, I want to start not launch good, but at that time, I want to start a school. I want to start a boarding school for Muslims. That was like, it, uh, some people know Zaytuna. So I was thinking like a high school version of Zaytuna. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, he's like, great, go for it. So I ended up saying, yeah, I will. And uh, uh, I guess that's maybe one of the good, you know, every good quality is also a bad quality. And, and 
if you use it the wrong way, but one of the good qualities for me is if I feel something is right, I just, I go for it, you yeah. know, and I don't, I don't um, just go with what everyone else does per se. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I went to back to school, got a master's in education. I started teaching at one of those elite prep schools, we call them. Um, and I think those are very popular as well in the UK boarding schools, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So I went to one of those elite boarding schools outside of Boston, Massachusetts, and taught for a couple of years. And it was cool. Um, also, it felt very like privileged and boring. Like I had like nine kids in my average class and they're all, you know, I mean, tuition is like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 a year. So wow. you're just, you know, everything is like smooth like butter, you know, yeah. it's, it's very easy. Um, it really didn't feel very meaningful. Uh, I do believe in the model. Like, so that helped me believe in that model. But I also felt like I needed to do something else at that time. Mm -hmm. And I ended up, um, well, one is the great thing about being a teacher is you get your summers off. So initially, yeah. like I was going overseas, so alhamdulillah, I was blessed to like study in Morocco and Jordan and got my Arabic and some Quran. And um, then we started, like I had a friend from college who started an Arabic program called Fawaki. I don't know if you ever heard of Fawaki, um, but it's like uh, an American uh, Quranic Arabic program. And we got that off the ground. And then, you know, my Saif Omar, he was my former roommate and friend who started it. He asked me to go full time because he was he was actually a consultant in Dubai at the time. So, he, you know, I was kind of like managing it. I was like, you know, why not? And I tried it and I did one year of it and it was OK. Um, I, I don't know if uh, have you ever worked in nonprofits, like small nonprofits? I haven't. No, no. Oh, well, you spend a lot of time fundraising. Right. Um, as you can imagine, you have to. Um, but to, yeah. it's like I, 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 I didn't want to spend time fundraising. Like I wanted to build Fawaki. I didn't want to spend my time fundraising. And I realized yeah. like, you know, this isn't really where I want to be. Um, and I realized also Safe had a vision. Like he was the founder. He had a vision for it. And I told him, I'm like, I hate to tell us to Safe, but like you got to quit your six figure consulting job and come back and, and lead this. And to his credit, he did. Like that's not an easy thing to do. I mean, he went yeah. to Harvard grad school. Right. Wow. Um, and, uh, you know, alhamdulillah, he's come, you know, he came back and he, he's led Fawak and Fawak is doing great today and is helping so many people learn Arabic. Um, I went from that to, you would never guess it, but film. So I actually mm -hmm. ended up becoming a film producer. I had another friend from college, Sultan Sharif, who had just gotten um, a big news. He got into a festival called Sundance, which is like a huge deal in America. For, it's like going, it's like winning an Oscar. It's like the best thing to happen if you're an independent filmmaker. Mm -hmm. But he was kind of a disaster when it came to finances and money and business. And he asked if, and I was actually at first just volunteering, helping him. And then he's like, Chris, can you move to Detroit? And we'll just kind of launch this the right way and do this together. And I was 25. I was single. Um, and I, I really like felt like I had nothing to lose. And I, at the time, I felt like if I do this crazy thing, hmm. It would be one of those decisions I look back on as like the one of the best decisions of my life. And that's exactly, you know, how it ended up being. That business was largely a failure, which is fine. Um, when you're in your 20s, fail it like a lot. It doesn't matter. No yeah. one cares, you know. Um, we had that one success, alhamdulillah, with the Sundance. From that, we did uh, a Kickstarter, which is that crowd. We talked about crowdfunding platform. Um, we were the first Muslims to use Kickstarter or really to be in crowdfunding at all. And I fell in love with it because I saw, I saw how Kickstarter was completely transforming the creative and entrepreneurial scene in America. Mm. And I thought, wow, what if we could do this for Muslims? Mm. And that was the first time I had that idea. Like, it'd be amazing if we had a Muslim Kickstarter. And I started like asking around, no one was doing it. Then I found a couple guys who were thinking about it. And I was like, I wasn't thinking about co-founding. I was just telling them, I'm like, hey, if you do this, like, I'd love to help you. Like, I'd love to be part of this, get this established. Like, I think the world needs this. And after a couple of months, they're like, nah, you know, we decided we're not going to pursue it. It's just too risky. And like, you know, it's complicated and it's not a great business. And, and I was like, well, if no one's going to do it, I'll do it. And I, I didn't really know what I was doing, um, but I was very fortunate we had a new a startup program here in Detroit called Bizdom. So like, you know, every city's got their like billionaire that like kind of backs the city. Yeah. Um, so we have one in Detroit. His name is Dane Gilbert, who found something called Quicken Loans and owns the Cleveland Cavaliers basketball team. Um, but anyway, Dane Gilbert, 
he had this little entrepreneurship program. I enrolled in it. I developed this idea for launch good, came out of that. One of my friends and mentors, uh, Haris Ahmed, was uh, very supportive. Alhamdulillah, may Allah bless him and his family and his wealth. Um, he basically gave like a small angel investment that we later paid back um, to develop the, the website. And we, we used some guys in Pakistan. Um, what was supposed to take three months took 18 months. Uh, so that's, you know, I mean, there's like, it just took three years to go from that idea yeah. to the point of the business actually being able to like exist mm-hmm. and, and collect its first dollar. Mm-hmm. Uh, but along that way, while I'm building it, uh, I was still helping people um, and uh, you know, meaning helping Muslims do their crowdfunding campaigns. We just have, would do it on like Indiegogo or Kickstarter, GoFundMe, et cetera. Um, and one of those people were uh, Amani Kalawi, uh, or was Amani Kalawi. Uh, she's my uh, co-founder, my chief operating officer. Uh, and at the time, she's extremely young. I was still in college, um, you know, this uh, Syrian American hijabi here in Detroit. But she was like a tour de force. And I could tell, like, she's, you know, really like an A player. Um, yeah. So I asked her to join me. Of course, she rejected the idea. Um, <laughs> and so I had to keep asking her for like over a year. Um, and alhamdulillah, finally, um, she did join me. And also along that way, we found our design, uh, our chief design officer, Omar Hamid, who was in Atlanta. Initially, we just hired him as a contractor to make the website. Yeah. Uh, with the, the little money we had left. Um, and subhanAllah, he actually kept working on the website, even though the job was done. And I told him like, Omar, I don't, I don't have any more budget. I can't pay you for this. And he just believed in the idea so much. He's like, don't worry. Like, this is like an amazing idea. I really believe in it. I want to see it come to life. And at some point I'm like, listen, if you're going to work for free, at least let me make you a co-founder. Um, and that's how the three of us came together. And that's how launch gets started. Eventually it was about September of 2013. Uh, right. we launched a website. So this year we'll be celebrating eight years, inshallah. Inshallah. That's, that's amazing. That's amazing to hear. Yeah. So many things I love about that story, just, uh, you know, your, your, your personal journey and, you know, how you brought these, these very talented individuals together, um, how certain people believed in the vision. I think there's so many, uh, like takeaway points just, just from that story. And, you know, the, just the fact that it took a while as well, it wasn't something that, you know, just kind of happened overnight. Um, and it, it, all the pieces just came together immediately. Like it, it took time. Yeah. Um, and this is one thing I always talk about. One thing I love is, you know, always um, uh, like, like you mentioned something earlier. I, I had a smile on my face because it reminds me of myself where you're like, you know, when I kind of believe in something, uh, when I kind of know something's like right in my heart, I just kind of go for it. And I, I, and I found myself over the last few years to kind of be that person as well. Like I just, inshallah, yeah. if, if I've made my dua and I've done my, you know, istishara, and I've consulted with people, and, and I feel like it's the right thing. I'll just do it, even if it's a crazy thing, uh, according to others. So that's, that's one thing I, that, that, I, that I really appreciated you saying. And you kind of just went for it, and alhamdulillah, uh, you know, uh, the, the thing I was saying is, when you kind of contribute your your strengths um, and your skills towards something, um, towards this vision that you have, and of course, one thing that we're going to be speaking about uh, today is legacy as well, um, then you really can uh, create something that inshallah can um, uh, contribute towards that legacy. So there's so many, so many things you mentioned there, which I, I think is, is, is pretty amazing. Um, but one thing I quickly want to touch on, um, you know, is, is just about like looking back now over the last, you know, a few years, um, you know, almost like a decade. Uh, I, I'm sure there's so many success stories um you know like i said i myself have just personally just loved it and have benefited so much um actually just last ramadan um we did a campaign with hrf um building a, a masjid and a school in bangladesh uh, the build hope campaign and alhamdulillah like we, we you know uh, because of like covid and things like that works we, we're really slow uh, but just recently i found out alhamdulillah we, we've almost raised the the full amount it was like forty thousand pounds um, and that's it. And most of it was, was raised last Ramadan, by the way. Um, and literally, they're, they're now going to start the works very soon. There's going to be like, it's, it's, in a, it's, in, it's in a very remote village, by the way, in Bangladesh, where uh, the, the brother was telling me, like, the only way you can get to that, to that village is if you, if you basically jump on a boat um, and it's a good like hour on a boat in the middle of nowhere. And it's very risky. And that's it. That's the only way you can, you can get to that village. 
form of transport, no other form of transport. And those That's people, crazy. like a few hundred of them on that village, uh, on that island, essentially it's a very small island and they have no masjid and no school. And this would be the first one there. Wow. And that's it. It's like when I heard that like over a year ago, I was like, well, that's it, we're going to do this. And alhamdulillah, that's going to also come to fruition very soon. And that was done on, on launch good last Ramadan. So, wow. so this is like personally for me, but for you, like I, I don't know how you would do this because it's it's such a such a difficult thing to ask. But like one or two, just like one or two success stories of organizations or individuals that just that straight away come to your mind. What would you say? It's really hard. You know, so if, if people ask me that question in the first year or two, it was so easy because we had like yeah. 100 campaigns, 200 campaigns. Yeah. We're over 20,000 campaigns now. <laughs> and so you get this like analysis paralysis. You're like, oh my God. So I, you know, I won't, I'll say a few things. One, our best story, uh, I would say my favorite project is the, the next one, right? Or it, it's still to come. Um, and uh, I'll take that as a, uh, you know, an ode to one of my favorite sports players. His name is Tom Brady. He wins a lot of championships in football, yeah, yeah. American football. And they'll ask him, oh, which was your favorite, you know, Super Bowl ring? He's like the next one. Um, and it really keeps him focused on future. And I, and I really believe that. I think the work that we've done, it seems like a lot. But inshallah, when we look back 10 years from now, we're like, wow, that was still just the start. Um, and, and I also think about like these campaigns, like the one you mentioned right now about the school in Bangladesh. My real hope, is that maybe in the next 20 years, we have someone become the head of a Muslim country who launched good was a significant part of their journey. Maybe we paid for their school, um, you know, in a rural village as they're coming up. Or maybe we, uh, like we have a lot of campaigns, ones I'm very passionate about. It's like we send, um, you know, you support these uh, individuals to go and pursue higher education degrees or training. Actually, we have one right now uh, which I think you guys will be re- featuring, uh, thankfully, is a, this incredible story of a Palestinian sister who is going to Oxford for her PhD yeah. now. Who knows where she's going to be in 20 years, yeah. right, in 30 years. Um, and uh, so that said, I want to give you an answer to your story. All right, so a couple of that come to mind that really mean, they're, mean a lot to me. Um, one is Yaqeen Institute itself. Um, so I remember Sheikh Omar Suleiman, you know, he was like a, this like rising star in America as a scholar and, and teacher. And uh, he, of course, had this falling out with Bayina. Um, and then all of a sudden it's like, OK, where is he going from there? Well, he's launching this new institute called Yaqeen Institute. Yeah. And he wanted to do, to do a launch good to, to like kickstart it and get it off the ground. And I think they had a goal of 100,000. And at that time, we were still really, you know, quite small. And so 100,000 was like, wow, that's a, yeah. that's a really sizable that's goal. I don't know if you can do it. And like, subhanAllah, in a week or less than a week, they hit their goal of 100,000. Uh, Yaqeen Institute is actually, by revenue, like, uh, uh, or operating budget, bigger than Launchka today. As big as we've grown and as much as we've grown over the last, you know, eight years, Yaqeen is even uh, slightly bigger. They're having this amazing impact on... Um, you know, helping strengthen young Muslims' understanding of Islam, um, mis- con- you know, correcting misconceptions of Islam, supporting Muslim scholarship all across the world. I mean, it's just amazing. And to think that I pray like we get some small part of the reward of that just by being the platform that helped them uh, get started, that's pretty amazing. Um, I actually did, and- didn't know that. Like, I, of course, we all know the Athene Institute and the amazing work they're doing. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that the, the beginnings were, were on launch code. That's amazing, mashallah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Um, you know, and another one, I'd love to highlight an individual campaign. Um, you know, I just got, it's interesting actually, uh, I just got an email from an old friend I had not been in touch with for a long time. And she um, was one of the first pe- pe- people ever to use launch good. She had done at the time a launch good to raise money to go study at Bayina. Um, Bayina and Qalim. And this was like, wait, like this is the first year of launch good. Right. And um, she, it's funny because she had told people like, okay, uh, if you donate so much, then I'll do calligraphy in your name. She's kind of studying calligraphy. And uh, so anyway, she sent this email. She's like, you know, I never gave you your calligraphy. Uh, I, I'm really sorry about that. Um, you know, you supported my journey early on. And I want to give you back that money. 
And she's like, by the way, uh, just to let you know, I did Bayina, then I did Qalam, then I did this, you know, um, seminary degree, and I was a hospital chaplain, and I'm not a chaplain here, and I'm working all these students, and I'm like, subhanAllah, like, no way am I taking my money back, like, absolutely not, like, I supported you, just like a little donation, and it set you off on this journey, and, you know, alhamdulillah, like, you, you've really developed yourself, and you're helping so many people, um, and, uh, you know, I'm just, I, I'm very grateful, like, we, I get to see these stories being unfolded in front of my eyes and the story's not done. That's the, the other yeah. incredible thing about it. Amazing. Amazing. Mashallah. Yeah. And, and like that, so many organizations, so many individuals, mashallah, that they all have their own personal stories, uh, which stems from launch good. And, and like you said, uh, you know, on to the next one, you know, you're just thinking ahead. Yeah. Of there's, there's be and, and, and I think it's important for us to be very akhira oriented as Muslims, right? To be very, hereafter oriented mm -hmm. and when you see that like right now we got this whole like uh meme stock generation growing and like the cryptocurrency craze and uh, muslims especially you know loving it because it's a, a halal investment that's easy to get into and uh, you know they're really excited he's like wow you know i grew my in, in one week i grew my balance 10 percent. this that and it's like you know, subhanAllah, Allah promises us like up to 700 times reward or more even for mm -hmm. your Southern club. Like we don't think about it, but like if we're getting all into investing, like invest, like think about these as investments in your hereafter. Because when you die, like those things are gone. You know, I mean, the, the wealth, it doesn't, it'll follow you to grave, but it doesn't stay with you, right? It goes back with your family. So um, I, I think it's really cool to think like all the time I'm putting these micro investments and I don't know where they'll go, right? Like I invested in Sidra and mashallah, look what she became, you know, as this chaplain and everything. And it was just like maybe 20 bucks or something. And um, uh, th that's the opportunity. And like, that's the way I believe the orientation of we Muslims should be is like invest in every opportunity to help others because really at the end of the day, you're helping yourself and you don't know like how that seed is going to germinate, right? Like it may become like, uh, I, I don't know if you've ever seen a redwood tree. H have you ever seen a redwood tree? No, I don't think. But, but you, I, you, have you heard of a redwood tree before? I've heard of it, yeah. I don't, I don't yeah, know if I've seen it. Redwood tree. It's the largest, like the tallest tree in the world, right? And uh, it's it's incredible. You can, inshallah, if you ever get a chance to go to California or Oregon, like you can go see these trees. Yeah. And they're just, they're enormous. They live for over a thousand years, et cetera, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the pine cone, this is how big the pine cone is of a redwood tree. It's like the smallest seed. Wow. And I was fun. I thought about that and I was like, um, and I didn't know that. Like I, there are some really big pine trees out there. And if you get their pine cones, they're like massive, right? And they're very fun, ornamental little things. And then like, I was thinking, I was like, how big is the pine cone of redwood? And I'm thinking it's just like, you know, it's like <laughs> bigger than a rugby, right? A rugby ball. I'm like, and then it's like, no, it's just this tiny little thing. So it's kind of like, you never know. Like when you give this sadaqa, it's like you're planting little seeds. You don't know what it'll germinate and become. Yeah. Uh, but you mentioned something I, I, I remember I wanted to talk about. By the way, I apologize. I'm, I'm like half Irish. So we're storytellers. We, we can, once you get us going, we talk. The, uh, you talked about how people were so inspired by what you did with, with supporting the, you know, the workers of the Haramein. Yeah. And then they started doing it themselves. This is from the beginning, the whole idea of launch good. It's mm -hmm. not a, actually about the crowdfunding. It's about inspiring people through the crowdfunding campaigns. Yeah. And the hope is like, yeah, you, someone might do a campaign to start a, you know, like a, a Muslim children's book mm -hmm. and they get like a hundred donors, but within those hundred donors, there's going to be like three people that are like, Oh wow. Like I could, I could do this myself. Like I had that idea. I didn't think people would support me. So now those three people go out and they do their own books. And then that three becomes nine. And that nine becomes 27. Exponential yeah. growth is amazing. And it's actually the growth of Islam itself. Like we know like from years, uh, the whole Meccan years, those, that 13 year period, like the growth was so slow yeah. of the Muslim community, but it was exponentially slow. Yeah. And then you just saw like at a certain point, it just starts to take off. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is... Um, you know, that's always been my vision for launch kit. And it's exactly like how we've grown. Like our first year, we crowdfunded like a million dollars. Wow. And it became around like 
you know, 3 million and then it became 10 million and 25 and then 50, then a hundred and now we're 180. Like it just like, it like, really took off like a million dollars. Like, like sometimes in, 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 it just takes a week for us to hit a million dollars of fundraising, you know? And in the beginning it took 52 weeks. Um, and inshallah, like we're going towards a, a future where maybe a million dollars is what is raised on average in a single day of launch good. Um, th- what matters is, is the virality of the ideas. And like, are we able to inspire our Muslim community to like go for it? Like see, they see someone to help, I'm gonna help them. I have an idea, I think the world needs, I'm gonna go bring it to life. You know, there's an organization doing great work. Let's let's take it to the next level. Mm, yeah, I love what you said there because you know something that I personally like, I try and implement, and and, and I discuss it a lot with my own students. Is uh, like every, everybody on YouTube nowadays, like or social media, we talk about like life hacks, right? So on TikTok, you get these videos like small life hacks, and then I always talk about like similar to what you said about you know being that kind of like akhirah driven. Uh, I call it like after life hacks, right? Oh, so, I like yeah, that. After life yeah. Are you so, on TikTok? So, I, I am actually, yeah, funnily oh enough. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I am, I am. I, 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 so so that's, that's, a, that's a story for another day. But I joined literally just thinking that, you know what, like I, I'm already on Instagram and I post like short like videos and reminders. Um, I don't do like crazy dances, don't worry, right? Not yet. <laughs> Hello, that, that is true. <laughs> and literally i just i just upload the same on on tiktok um and it's funny because the last few months like it, it started getting a bit, bit of traction so I, I thought let me stay on there but one thing i try not to do by the way is actually go on the app and just scroll that's that's something i can't oh, I I'm never gonna do it, I, it, I, like in the early days of tiktok i downloaded like, this looks interesting i was like it's not, for a while. I just... yeah, it's, it's not even a stuff for a lot now it's just like it's just time it's just gone when, yeah. when, you, when you, you start it's just so you know why it's successful and you know yeah. why the youth yeah, exactly. love it yeah it's just like that right anyway so That's um, really cool. after life hacks yeah. after, after life hacks so so yeah so we, we were talking about this and i said you know what you have to you have to think long term like when you do an action and what your intention is and we spoke about like the seed right that you have to try and plant as many seeds as you can and, and my students said you know start, give us an example you know so I said, okay, fine, you know, let's put like charity and all of those things to a side for a second. I think about like some of the smallest things, right? So I gave an example, like one of my other students came to me and basically, um, mashallah, uh, he, had a, he had a newborn child, right? So he, he asked me um, a question regarding naming the child. So is this a good name? What are your thoughts on this? What's the meaning behind it, etc. So immediately what I thought of is afterlife hack, which is, okay, you know, I'm not just going to help this guy. I'm going to like go out of my way now yeah. to to give him everything that he needs to know about this child. Because inshallah, by naming the child, that's what the child is going to be known as for the rest of his life, right? And my intention is that everything that this child does now, all the khayb, I want the reward for it. I'm going to be yeah. really selfish here and I want to take that reward. From what? Just like a small piece of advice that's going to take me. I literally sent like a three, four minute voice note on WhatsApp. And I said, and he, he actually went ahead with that advice, named his child, etc. based on that. And I gave that example. And I said, you know what, you, we can do that every day. You know, we think about like, oh, I have to go out maybe on like a, a field trip to like, you know, some country to be able to give in charity. And I said, no, actually, you don't need to. Yeah. From, the, from a good word to just a donation, um, really investing in it. Um, and I, we spoke about this. I remember last year, actually, Ramadan, we did this live stream. You were on there as well. And I, and I said, based on that verse about, you know, kamathari habbatin, it's the example of yeah. a seed, that the whole purpose of a seed is you're supposed to go back and nurture it. If you don't water it, and if you don't mm-hmm. take care of it, then then it, it will just wither away and it will just die, right? Um, but if you go and every day you're watering it, you know, mashallah, like a lot of our parents, um, they, they love like gardening and, and, and every day they go out and they're so proud when they see like, you know, like even a small tomato or a chili or yeah. something like that because right? because they've, they've poured their love into it and i said same thing with charity right like it's not about just going on launchgood.com forward slash whatever campaign okay i'll just drop a donation and halas, that's it. i'll go home and, and, and i'll never look at it again actually you're supposed to keep updated like how is this campaign doing is there any way is there any other way i yeah. can support is there a way i can share with others you know wow mashallah they've hit their target let me keep updated let me see and then you will see that subhanAllah, your donation actually went a long way. Even if they themselves weren't updating you, you're supposed to look after the oh, seed. Interesting. That's cool. Right. 
I would, I would love, you know, one of the things I'm like very uh, uh, jealous and shallow in a good way of, uh, of is like all these people that actually get to travel and see yeah. the, see what they do. And uh, one of the cool things about launching is that we're at a point where like basically anywhere I do travel, I can discover a campaign that was related to it. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, even like a few years ago, and we were still like relatively small a few years ago, we, we had a retreat to Langkawi, Malaysia, yeah. um, because we just opened up Malaysia. So we're like, okay, let's take our team out. And, and we went to Langkawi. And uh, I was like, there's no way we have ever had a launch good campaign on Langkawi. And then I looked up and I was like, no, there's an orphanage in Langkawi we support. I was like, this is crazy. You know, and, and uh, yeah, it, you know, it's like one of those things I'm like, maybe like at some point in my life, maybe when I'm 40 and things are stable with launch good, I can step back a little bit. I'll just travel the world and I'll, I'll start to go see like all these uh, kind of you know, stories we've helped. Uh, that, that, would know, be, that would be, by the way, an amazing, amazing like series. If you were to document that, I know. that would be like an amazing series in and of itself. Uh, sponsored by Elm Feed, or maybe yeah, you guys can help us. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking of my Elm Feed media hat on right now, so that, that would actually be <laughs> an amazing uh, series. But no, that's, it's, it's, it's pretty amazing just to think about it. I, uh, you know, one thing I'm just conscious of time as well. One thing I wanted to kind of end with before we speak about you know launch good, um, uh, just concluding like some with some future projects, okay. inshallah, is um, just from your end. Um, because so, because with with this podcast we always try to make it practical we always want something for our um listeners and viewers to take away from this uh we've spoken about so many different things your personal story the the journey of launch good and all of these mashallah amazing campaigns and you know what what's what's your advice in terms of you know we've spoken about legacy so much planting the seeds etc um just like some final tips from your end uh, for people who maybe are thinking of doing something, you know, they're already doing something, whatever it may be. Um, how how can we, inshallah, leave behind as best as we can, or at least try to, um, a, a, a legacy or a lasting legacy, inshallah? So any final tips? No, it's, it's, a, it's a great question. Uh, remind me, when do we expect people to be listening to this? It will be March time or... Uh, it will be, it'll probably be yeah, in the next like few weeks, which, which is probably March time. Yeah, pretty much. That's yeah. great. So, you know, we're probably in Shaban at that point, you know, a few things come to mind. Um, you know, I really would encourage people to go to launchgood.com slash Ramadan. We're going to have our Ramadan challenge. And it's like this, it's this incredible opportunity where 30 days of giving um, and, and you get to support, like, it's like planting 30 seeds, right? You get to support and it may not feel like a lot like, Hey, I'm giving, you know, five, 10 pounds a day. You know, it's, it's nice for myself, but what am I actually doing? Well, you know, we're going to have inshallah tens of thousands, maybe a hundred thousand people. And so that 10 pounds a day is actually like a million pounds a day because you're giving with the crowd. And now like that's 30 million pounds throughout the whole month of Ramadan, just supporting thousands and thousands and thousands of, of amazing causes inshallah. Yeah. Um, so if the timing's right, you know, maybe people go to launchgood.com slash Ramadan. Uh, but more generally, beyond just specifically Ramadan, we did recently launch a new initiative actually called Legacy. Um, so launchgood.com slash Legacy. And it's an amazing opportunity to create a Sadaqa Jariya campaign. Mm-hmm. And uh, one of our featured partners, for example, we, we, we work with a lot of charities uh, but one of them is called Pious Projects. They will actually make, let's say you want to build a well or build a masjid. So those are examples of sadaqa jari or a continuous charity. And yeah. so maybe you have a loved one, like in your, your father's aunt name, your mother's name, you want to build a well or you want to build a masjid. Uh, building a masjid is not cheap, by the way, right? Um, a, a cheap masjid, might, I think, is like $25,000. Yeah. Uh, so it's usually a bit much for a single person. But, you know, it's not just your mother that... Um, uh, you loved, like a lot of people loved her, right? Mm-hmm. And so give the opportunity, let's, you know, create a campaign, build that masjid for your mother's name, give everyone a chance to contribute. And then Pi's Project will actually send you a 3D model of your masjid with a barcode you can scan. When you scan it, it opens up a video of people making dua for your mother. And you can also get the coordinates of the masjid. So, you know, perhaps you could go visit that masjid uh, I think I can't remember which country they work in the West Af- uh, between a couple countries in West Africa. 
And um, it's just like, and that's just one of many options, but that's pretty incredible. But, but I think what's cool is you don't actually even have to wait till people pass. So my Quran teacher, Mila, uh, lengthened her life. She's 83. She just turned 83. And I'm like, wait a second, I should just do this now. And they have a smaller level. It's like a well, I think it's $2,500. And I'm like, we should just crowdfund the, the well, get it made the 3D model. And then when her birthday comes, uh, when she turns 84, we're like, you know, happy birthday and uh, show her that. And, you know, that's great because, you know, really, like what does someone in their 80s want for their birthday? Like they don't want the latest iPhone. They don't want, you know, uh, I mean, they're, they're at the end of their lives and they're very oriented oftentimes towards that next stage of life. Um, and so I think it's great. Create a legacy campaign, create a sadaqa jariya for your loved ones, um, whether they're living or, or, or they've passed on already. Um, and uh, you can do that by going to launchkit.com slash legacy. Absolutely amazing, inshallah. And I hope that, uh, you know, uh, over the years, the Ramadan uh, challenge has been really exciting for me uh, personally, just to see those uh, automated donations and even like, uh, the, the competitions every day, like, you know, a, a few of our campaigns, it is crazy. Like, uh, we literally stay up all night until Fajr, like, you know, updating it every hour. Uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. You guys in the UK are too intense. I, I heard, like, <laughs> like, it's like a meme over there now. It's like, you know, like, I saw people, like, yeah, literally me creating memes about, like, donating to my launch good campaign. But it's great, right? Because, alhamdulillah, it's like, you know, comp- as the Quran says, like, compete in goodness, you know, compete for good. And, and again, it's it's this global community. I mean, people literally, I think last year we had over a hundred countries represented in Ramadan, like people fundraising yeah. for causes across a hundred countries. That's insane. Amazing, amazing, mashallah. Well, you know, uh, I, I can't wait until Ramadan again. You know, firstly, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to reach the, the, the best of Ramadan, I mean. And, you know, for our, our viewers and, and our listeners, you know, you heard... Uh, you heard it there, mashallah. You know, if you haven't already heard of Launchgood, head over to the, the website launchgood.com forward slash uh, uh, legacy um, and launchgood.com forward slash Ramadan as well. Inshallah, we've got some amazing things coming up. Um, I'm super excited about just, you know, the future of Launchgood and the, the different campaigns that you guys can all, inshallah, um, support. Uh, and we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts it. And, uh, you know, uh, we pray that Allah blesses. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, brother Chris and the team and, and everyone behind it, inshallah. Um, and honestly, super excited. But honestly, brother Chris, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, I really enjoyed, enjoyed uh, listening oh, yeah, to you and benefiting to, uh, uh, from you. Um, and yeah, inshallah, you know, um, looking forward to, to you coming down to the UK next time and hopefully we can have a, a catch up face to face, inshallah. That'd be nice. I mean, it would be incredible. Inshallah. And to oh, yeah, our viewers yeah. and listeners, um, do check out Launchgood and subscribe to our channel. We've got more podcasts coming your way from myself, Shabir, from Chris. We will see you next time. Keep us in your du'as and your prayers. Until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.